second practice day of version 3.0 snow bike see if we can um, dial in some things I've been I made a few changes and I'm up here in the snow zone again it's flooding down in the valley and up here it turned to snow about halfway up the climb so that's good but then they've been looks like they've been tearing up these slopes I don't know why they do this stuff right when the motorized can get on it it's all of a sudden chopped up so we'll see how the changes affect the ride yeah look at that it's just chewed up up there might if we go tear up the nordic trails It already feels better out of the box, but I'm not sure if that's just because there's new snow. I'm trying to test out this ski. Yeah, let's hit up the bunny hill for starters. Jumping on it a little. Yeah, it already feels way better. Just made a few adjustments on the suspension. Gotta go to the Learner's Hill to practice. Yeah, buddy, it is night and day. That first ride, I was beginning to question the ski. Visibility is not the greatest here, but as long as I don't hit some stray equipment, should be good here. Bike feels great, though. Anyway, those first conditions I was riding in, ski was just like grabbing, doing all kinds of stuff, but I think it's just the, the nature of the snow that day, because obviously it, today for me, feels great. The bike feels very zippy too. front end was coming up a lot more too so I did a rail tip adjustment that might be contributing to the better feel today No, did they trash this up here? Thanks a lot, guys. 
kind of trash that is. Now we got these chunks of ice everywhere. Oh well, it will start to fill in. At least they didn't trash up this run. Kind of practice my how to slow myself on a descent. It's just like snowboarding going front ways. Or skiing with a mono ski. I think I might need a little more ski pressure back in. Air Pro. There's some ice chunks underneath here. But the new snow feels heavenly. I'll take it back on for winter. It's supposed to keep piling on too. These great April storms. Wish I could see a little better. I don't want to hit some ice chunk and have it throw me off. All in all, not not bad this season with my new clear goggles. I've been seeing a lot better this season than previous. These magnetic goggles are easy to change out. I think they're a real winner this year for me. A lot of times when other guys are complaining about not being able to see, I'm doing all right. Got to be careful, somewhere in here they dug a big old pit recently. All right, let's try some climb again. So zippy. If you're listening to my radio, I'm just kind of scanning the several channels right now. Listening to the flooding and everything down in the valley. Meanwhile, I've got a fresh slate, clean slate up here. Other than those chunks, no one's been up here. Brand new snow. I'm gonna come up here after I rip around a while. I'm gonna do some skiing. Wow, this feels awesome. The bike, the setup, new fuel pump. So my theory, I talked about it a little bit last time, but as I was pulling apart my fuel pump, a little tiny sponge, well not sponge, but more like just foam, came out of the whole mix. I think what happened was I had a sponge floating around in there that periodically would just kind of clog up the intake and then it would get going again when I'd add new fuel, tip the bike over, whatever I was doing. So I think that was the culprit, although my fuel filter was pretty black. Watch out for those holes right there. Creeks are opening up. Well, my fuel filter was pretty black, so I think I was due for a change anyway. Too bad they put those internal, they make them hard to get to. They want you to do a $300 fix instead of a $5, $10 fix. But anyway, I've got the parts and I'm gonna redo it just so I have, I've learned you need a backup fuel pump sitting around ready to go because if you're 
in need of one. Two bikes I've had now that I've had some major problems way out in the back country that I needed a fuel pump, so I'm just gonna have one on hand, ready to go. It's time for me to hit up my favorite side hilling practice grounds. See how this SS does. Oh yeah, it feels mucho nimble. Test out. This is why I'm wondering with this new ski is the ability to do that. Yeah. Yeah, so nimble. Need a little more gear on that one. Test out the brake. That's one complaint with these, and I got a brake cover. I'll add it this summer. But it's, these conditions are supposed to be fine. And it's working. I don't know if the camzo would have pulled that. I don't know if it would have. I think I had more throttle left too. I just kept I just kept trenching straight up. And the snow is not that hard underneath, so I wasn't getting a terrible amount of traction. Oh yes. This bike much easier to uh do that quick turn there. And this is a steep slope right now. Let's see if I can get an angle on it. I'm side hilling it right now. I'll start dropping down. Oh yes. Yes. Yes, this is nimble. So nimble. Sweet. Super impressed on ride two. Much lighter too. Let's hit up a little tree action. Now that I'm getting confident. Turning it uphill. I'm in awe. I'm speechless. This is great. This Yeti track so much lighter, so much quicker, agile. Part of it's the ski too. I'm just carving this slope like the Camzo ski couldn't. This is a thing of beauty. So the name of this ski run is Avalanche. I think it is barely steep enough it could Avalanche. myself. I 
I do have a beacon on, but that's kind of worthless. No one else out here. Let me explain myself though, as I stop in a non, non avalanche zone right here. So the thing is, people have been skiing this all season. So when that skiing happens, they kind of really break up all the tension that could cause a slab. So that's why I feel much safer to come over here because of all that. Over time though, without the skiing on it, since the ski area is closed, um, it will build up some new snow and then it's a potential problem, but this isn't quite enough new snow nor is there loading uh, That I'm not concerned at all about it. So that's why I'm That's why I'm right here and not over there which could be uh, More dangerous more potential problems, so I'm just kind of playing my odds here and that's why I'm right here And not elsewhere practicing some steep hill interval training. If you get the acronym. Oh, that, that is magnificent. The ability to go downhill and turn it that quick. Much tighter turn. Oh, I'm going to be enjoying some climbing this year with this because I can take that turn and not scrub near as much elevation as I had to with the Camzo and turn it around on a dime and point it up and blast so the main advantages I'm seeing because all in all I don't think all the kits there's a huge amount of difference in kits I mean it's negligible but I guess it's kind of like a running shoe there's not a huge amount of difference between running shoes but enough that it's a uh, makes a big difference when you get good at it but in any case the um, The Yeti here, so main things that are really a selling point for me is look how much less snow it holds. It's just a really good design and I've always been a fan of carbon fiber from the mountain biking. But way less snow. I haven't weighed it but the thing is way lighter than the Camzo setup. I mean just picking it up is so much easier. So between that less snow, weight savings, and you know i think this belt drive is really sweet how it does spool up real quick so way more responsive yeah, and i think there's some other design things I really like that rack the integrated fuel can those little things i am digging i was just concerned about that ski on how bad it was just tossing me around on that crusty condition but Today feels unbelievable. So great ski. In fact, I was even shopping. I was thinking about putting my Camzo ski back on for the spring, but no worries. It's all good. I just gotta be careful in crusty conditions and maybe if I need to run the Camzo. I really wouldn't want to ride that on gravel either. Camzo I think would do better. But anyway, that's the, the differences and also, the suspension's nice. Things are feeling much more plush. Ten four. Let's go rip some more. Ah, it is blizzardous up here. Time for a little meadow riding to test out how tight I can turn. Oh, that is, that is. 
is magical tight. Wow, conditions are prime for the snow bike. See, it feels so much, so much tighter all the way around. Better not stay up here too long. I could get have a hard time getting down the road. They don't plow this thing as much this time of year. see what I can do when I go slow and how much it will trench down. what third gear can do. down a bit but handled it can't see here I'm gonna try the snow bike gap I just hit something. That's good. Now I know what it feels like to hit something. I think that was an exposed tree. Yep, see all these trees poking up here? These mountains didn't quite get the snowfall that some of the other mountains around here did. Still not bad, but okay, this is right here. This extreme creeping is what I'm not as familiar with this bike on. But hey, I'm a professional. About getting the throttle just right. A little bit of break on that one. Yeah, 
Now that's a much steeper angle than normally I would do. Handled it great. I just kind of usually I would have chosen the 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 gap that was a little farther down, but then I went above the tree. That's why I'm out here practicing. Okay, let's see what happens on a slow little throttle. Nice. And then Yes. That was worth the extra money. Mainly talking about the ski and that move right there where I just pointed it and went. It's getting in out of ruts much better too this. Anyway, I'm just thoroughly impressed now. Thoroughly impressed. Let's see if I can go straight up that. Get to the top of this rock garden run. 